We all know that the DC Universe is held up in a multiverse, and the multiverse has infinite possibilities of your favorite DC Universes. But what if there was a corporation who had the ability to alter timelines, to purposefully retcon things, to make them advertiser friendly? Like everything is going to be cheery and perfect. That is Milk Wars. Get ready for a crazy trip. As the representatives of Retcon prepare for their presentation, a voice shouts that, Okay, you same-faced potch peddlers, let's wet our beaks and get ready to bargain. The presenter nervously adjusts his glasses, telling the man that there's no need to shout, but nevertheless, Retcon is happy to have him in their home office here in Final Heaven. In light of recent events, they have moved their business model away from broadcast to reality estate. This world that they are offering has a broad and unassailable appeal. The man at the table asks, Is this a joke? Of course I'm ready! Lord Manga Khan slams his hands on the table shouting, I am ready for the deal of my life! The presenter says that he will surely get that here. Now, allow him to introduce what they are selling today. The video on the projector screen plays, and we are taken to a small quiet town. One of Happy Harbor, Rhode Island. A place where the milkman brings fresh milk to everyone on a daily basis. And if there is ever an issue, it would be his pleasure to make things right with the snap of a neck. Because in Happy Harbor, if you're not happy, you're not properly living. But today, something different comes to Happy Harbor in the form of an ambulance that can magically appear out of thin air. The ambulance lands and it comes to a screeching halt and a group of people get out. And those people are the Doom Patrol. Jane looks around asking if this is where Retcon sent their rocket. Why here in Happy Harbor? Casey tells her that she doesn't know, but what she does know is that this place is so pastel. As the group moves towards one of the houses, Casey pushes open a door and sees several bottles of spilt milk on the ground and says that no one likes dairy this much. As they walk in, they find a thing, a living thing with udders. The owner of the house runs out telling everyone that he would appreciate it if they stepped away from his grandmother. And while they're at it, get out of his home. Mrs. Fox nervously peeks around the corner stating that she's already contacted the neighborhood watch. Intruders are not welcome here at Happy Harbor. Another voice then tells Mrs. Fox, It's a good thing that you did. These hooligans shouldn't be here. Everyone turns back to see Lobo, or rather a different version of Lobo, as he finishes lighting his pipe. He tells them, My name is Carl Lobo, and how can I help you? Cliff Steele grabs Lobo by the hand, crushing it, telling him, You best get your cardigan cart and crab cake self out of my way. Lobo pulls his hand back, telling him, now that type of language is a big N-O before the kids are asleep. Just then Lobo grabs Cliff and he throws him across the room. Currently at the retcon offices, Khan tells the presenter that it's a good sell, but he said broad appeal. Earth Prime is a niche property at best. The presenter says, just wait until you see the heroes of this world. They have their own trinity who distribute our milk. Back at Happy Harbor, as a loud crack a coom as lightning strikes, and as the smoke clears, Clark Kent, the milkman, man, cracks his knuckles, stating that it looks like Mr. Lobo was right to call them in. Larry runs out of the house, asking, Hey, who do you think you are with an energy field like that? And Vixen stands up, along with the others, stating, We're the Community League of Rhode Island, and we are a little more than disappointed in how you've handled yourselves. Jane yells to Vixen, We know each other! You're Mari from television! This isn't the real you! This is what Rat Khan wants! At that second, the spirit inside Larry breaks free, knocking everyone to the ground, and he flies off. Inside the house, Lobo says, You're ruining good people's yards. That just about does it! Cliff uppercuts Lobo into the air, and as he comes crashing down into the ground, Lobo says, We're having some kind of a strange block party here. Back outside, Clark lifts the ambulance, shouting, I will destroy this degenerate party bus! Casey calls out to him, stating that she's only going to tell him once, Put it down. Clark puts the ambulance down and flies in to attack Casey, but she dodges his attacks. As he swings, Casey begins to state that she can really do this all day. She's always early, and when he gets tired, they can talk. Clark yells, there's nothing to talk about. Strangos like you in a world no one wants. Now I'm going to turn it back and save it. Casey says, maybe we want that. We didn't get to choose who we are. Hell, I'm a comic book character cooked up in the back of a living ambulance. Everything's strange, and that's okay. When she opens up her eyes, she sees a train station as the train pulls up. The door is open, and a young girl with paint stands there, and Jane says that it's good to see her. It's been a while. The young girl tells her that it's good to see her. Well, not that she's complaining, but she's pretty sure there's a war going on out there. All she does is make painting sizzle, so why? 
Jane tells her that that's the question, isn't it? Casey mentions that she's a comic book character, so maybe everyone else here is too? As Jane opens up her eyes again, everyone begins to see themselves in their comic forms, the things that they've done, the things that they've accomplished over the years. The pages of the comic books fly around Clark, and he asks, who is that? And Casey tells him that's Superman. He's a part of your story, and he helps people. Clark looks at the page, telling them, Retcon sent me here and raised me to protect family interests. I knew that wasn't right, but I don't remember, but I do. I was never actually a baby. I was just here, born from nothing. Casey stops as her heart pounds and she says, that can't be. The only person who's given birth to nothing is, no, Retcon acquired it somehow. You're my son. You're mine and Terry's son. A voice then says that if that's really her son, then there's a lot of explaining to do. Casey looks back and sees Dinah, along with the rest of the Justice League of America, back to their normal selves. Clark tells them, You all look so strange. Don't look at me! Don't look at me! He screams, blowing everyone away from him, and a second later, he rockets off into the sky. Ray creates a light telescope, stating that that was super luminal speed. His trail cuts off once he passes the moon. And then Ryan begins to scratch his face, stating, So, what are we all doing here? And for that matter, who are you people? Jane says that they're the Doom Patrol, and superhero fights really are not their kind of thing. Dinah tells her that she thinks she remembers them from a long time ago. Didn't someone have a purple kid's toy on his head? Kind of hard to remember anything. Jane goes on stating it's because Happy Harbor has been adjusted, along with all of them, by retcon. Somewhere, everything that they do is entertainment for beings beyond their conception. The retcon used to control the programming. But once Doom Patrol shut them down, they started selling their reality cheap. They're using milk and people like Milkman Man to homogenize and sanitize everything. Suddenly, the being that leaped out of Larry zaps back into his body and Larry leans up asking, how'd we do? Ryan says that his memory's foamy, but he almost can remember it now. Milkman Man showed up at the sanctuary and forced them to drink that milk stuff. Just then, something begins to appear in the sky and there's a loud zeep a small little eyeball drone appears. It scrambles to get in the center of everyone and then it starts to project an image. The person in the image explains that his name is Cave Carson. 24 hours ago, him and his friend Swamp Thing discovered the home office of Retcon, an extra physical corporation that manipulates Earth. However, he only had a few seconds, so he's sending this eye out to sites where Retcon's quantum adjustments are dense. The eye knows how to find him. They have to meet But before he could finish, the transmission cuts off and fades away. Jane looks at Dinah and tells her that this isn't over. But it's there, not over, not the Justice Leagues. They've been through enough. Dinah asks, are you kidding? If you're going after retcon, the Justice League is going with you. Lobo throws his armor on Cliff and Cliff says, tight quarters with this dollar store monkey, why not? And Lobo says, don't go and flatter yourself with this tin flight frag. And with that, Cave's mechanical eye begins to get ready and fires a beam, taking the Doom Patrol and the Justice League to their next stop of the mission, the Milk Wars. And there you have it, chapter one to Milk Wars. Now, there is a reason as to why we are doing these in single issues, and I wanna explain that to you now. Milk Wars is held up in a separate imprint that DC is running known as Young Animal. Young Animal is where they're putting a lot of their weirder characters and weirder stories, such as Doom Patrol, Mother Panic, Shade the Changing Girl, and Cave Carson has a cybernetic eye. All of those stories are amazing, and I wanna start bringing them to this channel, but I need to know if you want them. So I thought Milk Wars would be a great introduction to these various books. This book was about Doom Patrol, and if you like that team, let me know, because we'll start doing the Doom Patrol books. The next one, next week, is going to be Mother Panic, another vigilante in Gotham that doesn't really listen to Batman. And we also get to meet Father Bruce. It's crazy, it's epic, I love this series, and I hope you guys do too. Let me know. Benny, we want young animal books right here at Comic Storian in the comments down below. Tell me you want Doom Patrol, Shade, you want Cave Carson, you want everything. I may have just had a little spittle right here. I apologize for that now. And I'll see you next time right here at Comic Story.